Ever looked up at the blue sky or stared at the ocean and thought, well, duh, that's how it's always been? Plot twist. Our planet wasn't always rocking these familiar colors. In fact, Earth went through what I like to call its rebellious phase. Complete with purple oceans and orange skies, it's like the planet was going through its own version of a wild hair dye experiment, except this makeover lasted millions of years. Back then, around 3.4 billion years ago, during what scientists call the Archean Eon. Fancy name, right? Earth was basically unrecognizable. If you could time travel to that period, you'd probably think you landed on the wrong planet. No trees, no grass, and definitely no Starbucks. Just a wild landscape that would make any sci-fi movie look boring in comparison. The ground was mostly bare rock, with geysers shooting up everywhere like nature's version of a water park gone wrong. Meteors crashed down regularly, leaving craters that made the moon's surface look smooth in comparison. Here's an amazing fact that totally amazes me. The air you'd breathe back then, or rather couldn't breathe, had about 1,000 times more carbon dioxide than today. The temperature? Hot enough to make Death Valley feel like a cool spring day, averaging around 140 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Talk about a bad hair day that lasted for millions of years. Scientists have found evidence that even the poles were hot enough to make a penguin sweat, if penguins had existed back then, which they definitely didn't. Our ancient Earth didn't just look different, it smelled different too. Imagine a mix of rotten eggs and volcanic fumes. If you think your brother's gym socks smell bad, this would have put them to shame. The whole planet was basically one giant stink bomb. The air was so thick with sulfur compounds that it would have burned your nose faster than the strongest onion you've ever cut. But what really takes the cake is the ocean's purple shade. You might be wondering, purple? Really? Well, that's where things get even more interesting because these purple waters weren't just for show. And they weren't just some cosmic paint job too. They were alive with billions of tiny organisms called purple sulfur bacteria. These microscopic troublemakers were basically the rock stars of ancient Earth, thriving in an environment that would kill most modern life forms faster than you can say, oxygen please. Now, you might be asking yourself, why purple? Well, these bacteria had a pretty neat trick up their microscopic sleeves. Instead of using chlorophyll like modern plants, which gives them their green color, they used a different molecule called bacteriochlorophyll. This special compound helped them harness energy from the sun while giving them their funky purple color. It's like they found a way to photosynthesize before photosynthesis was cool. These purple bacteria covered such vast areas of the ancient oceans that from space, our planet probably looked like a giant grape. Scientists estimate that these purple seas might have covered up to 60% of Earth's surface. That's more area than all our modern continents combined. Talk about painting the town purple. But here's where it gets even more interesting. These bacteria weren't just floating around looking pretty. They were chemical warfare experts in an ocean with practically no oxygen, which would be like trying to breathe in a vacuum for us. They developed a way to survive by processing sulfur compounds. The catch? This process released a bunch of sulfide as a waste product. Yeah, that's the stuff that makes rotten eggs smell so lovely. So not only were the oceans purple, but they probably smelled bad enough to make a skunk hold its nose. The really fascinating thing about these purple pioneers is how they changed the game for life on Earth. They were among the first organisms to figure out how to use sunlight for energy, paving the way for all the plants that would come later. Sure, their method was a bit different, kind of like inventing the wheel but making it square instead of round, but hey, you've got to start somewhere. Recent studies have shown that these ancient purple bacteria were so efficient at their job that they could process up to 750 pounds of sulfur compounds per square mile every single day. That's like having a microscopic recycling plant working 24-7 in every drop of the ancient ocean. These tiny powerhouses weren't just surviving, they were thriving in conditions that would make modern bacteria pack their bags and call it quits. Some of these purple bacteria's descendants are still around today. You can find them in certain sulfur springs and deep sea vents, doing their thing just like their ancient ancestors did billions of years ago. It's like they're the living museums of Earth's past, quietly reminding us of a time when our planet looked more like something out of a science fiction movie than the home we know today. 
But as impressive as these purple seas were, they weren't the only thing that made ancient Earth look like it belonged in a cosmic art gallery. Up above those purple waters, something equally spectacular was happening in the skies. And it wasn't exactly what you'd call Instagram-worthy, unless orange is your favorite color. We're talking about a time when Earth's atmosphere was having what you might call a massive temper tantrum. Volcanoes were everywhere, spewing out gases and ash like teenagers with unlimited access to aerosol spray cans. Scientists have calculated that during this period, there were about 100 times more active volcanoes than we have today. That's right. Instead of our current 1,500 active volcanoes, Earth had around 150,000 of these smoking giants. The amount of ash and gases they released would make modern pollution look like a tiny puff of smoke. Basically, Earth was going through its smoker phase, and nobody was around to tell it to quit. The sky wasn't just orange. It was constantly changing shades throughout the day. The thick atmosphere, loaded with sulfur dioxide and other volcanic gases, acted like a giant mood ring. Morning skies might have been deep, rusty orange, shifting to bright tangerine by noon and ending with dark amber sunsets that would make our modern sunsets look like amateur hour. Temperature readings from ancient rocks tell us that all this volcanic activity created a super-powered greenhouse effect. The atmosphere trapped so much heat that rocks at the surface were hot enough to leave blisters on your feet if you had been around back then, which, thankfully, you weren't. We're talking about surface temperatures that could literally cook an egg on a rock. Actually, forget the egg. You could have probably grilled a whole burger. The air itself was a wild mix of gases that would make any modern-day environmental scientist have a heart attack. Carbon dioxide levels were about 100 times higher than today's levels, and methane was about 1,000 times more abundant. To put that in perspective, if our current atmosphere is like breathing in a classroom, the ancient atmosphere would have been like trying to breathe in a room full of soda fizz. But the mind-blowing part is that all this volcanic chaos actually helped set the stage for life as we know it. Those massive eruptions released minerals that eventually helped create the building blocks for future life forms. Recent studies of ancient rock formations have revealed that these volcanoes released enough iron to fill about 20 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, and that iron became crucial for early life forms. It's like Earth was running a really messy chemistry experiment that somehow worked out in the end. Talk about a happy accident. Research from analyzing ancient rock formations suggests that this orange sky period lasted for hundreds of millions of years. That's longer than all of recorded human history, multiplied by about 100,000. During this time, the orange skies and constant volcanic activity created conditions that would seem completely alien to us today. But for the creatures living in those purple oceans below, this was just another day in paradise. And speaking of those creatures, they had to develop some pretty incredible tricks to survive in this bizarre world. Because life back then had to be tough as nails. And I mean that literally. Some of the first living things actually used iron and sulfur to survive instead of oxygen, which is like choosing to eat rocks when there's perfectly good pizza available. These early organisms were the ultimate survivors. They developed some seriously weird but genius ways to stay alive. Take the heat-loving bacteria, for example. These tiny daredevils could survive in temperatures hot enough to boil water. Modern scientists found evidence that some could live in waters reaching 230 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hotter than your mom's best coffee maker can manage. And that wasn't even their most impressive trick. The real champions were what scientists call extremophiles, basically the cockroaches of the ancient world, except way cooler. These microscopic tough guys didn't just tolerate the harsh conditions, they thrived in them. Some actually ate sulfur for breakfast, while others figured out how to turn toxic metals into energy. That's like having a superpower that lets you eat poison and turn it into a sandwich. Recent studies have shown that these ancient microbes could process toxic metals at rates up to 50 times faster than any modern organism. These creatures invented whole new ways to breathe. Without oxygen around, they had to get creative. Some used nitrogen, others used sulfur, and a few brave pioneers even figured out how to use iron to power their cells. Recent studies show that some of these ancient microbes could process iron 100 times faster than their modern descendants. Talk about being overachievers. They were basically the Silicon Valley startups of their day, coming up with innovations that changed the whole game. 
the most successful adapters were the ones who could switch between different ways of surviving. Kind of like that friend who knows how to use both iPhone and Android, except instead of operating systems, these organisms were switching between completely different ways of staying alive. Scientists have found evidence that some could change their entire metabolism in less than an hour, which in the microbial world is like doing a complete wardrobe change in the blink of an eye. Some of these survival tricks were so good that they're still being used today. Deep in the ocean, miles below the surface where there's no oxygen, modern bacteria are still using these ancient survival methods. It's like they're keeping alive a family recipe that's billions of years old. These living fossils are literally running the same biological software that their great, 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 multiply that by a billion grandparents used. Scientists estimate that about 40% of all modern bacteria still carry some genes from these ancient survivors. But as impressive as these adaptations were, they weren't meant to last forever. Nature had other plans, and changes were coming to our planet. Big changes that would transform Earth's purple oceans and orange skies into something more familiar to our eyes. About 2.4 billion years ago, Earth started going through what scientists call the Great Oxidation Event. But honestly, they should have called it the Great Makeover Event, because this was the biggest planetary transformation since Earth decided to stop getting hit by random space rocks every Tuesday. The main troublemakers behind this change? Tiny bacteria that figured out how to do something revolutionary. Photosynthesis. These little green geniuses started turning sunlight and carbon dioxide into energy, with oxygen as a waste product. At first, it was like adding a drop of bleach to a purple shirt. Nothing seemed to happen. The oxygen they produced got soaked up by iron in the oceans, creating massive layers of rust, which, by the way, now form those red bands you see in old rocks, Earth's first attempt at interior decorating. But these bacteria were persistent little things. They kept pumping out oxygen like it was going out of style. Scientists estimate they produce about 100 million tons of oxygen per year. That's like filling the Great Pyramid of Giza with pure oxygen every single day. Eventually, all the iron in the oceans got rusty, and oxygen had nowhere else to go but up into the atmosphere. The process was so efficient that within a few million years, they had oxidized more iron than all of our modern steel mills produce in a century. This was bad news for our purple sulfur loving friends. Oxygen was basically poison to them, like serving kryptonite smoothies to Superman. Many of these ancient microbes died out, while others retreated to the deep ocean where oxygen couldn't reach them. The survivors are still down there today, probably grumbling about how things were better in the old days like grumpy grandparents at a family reunion. The orange skies started clearing up too. All that oxygen reacted with the volcanic gases, slowly turning the atmosphere from its psychedelic orange to a more familiar blue. The change was so gradual that if you lived a human lifespan back then, you wouldn't have noticed any difference. But over millions of years, it was like Earth was slowly waking up from a really long, really orange dream. Modern analysis of ancient rocks shows that this transformation happened at different rates around the globe. Some areas cleared up in as little as 100,000 years, while others took millions. During this transition period, some parts of Earth's oceans were purple on top and green underneath, while others were green on top and purple below. The planet looked like it couldn't make up its mind about what color scheme to go with. Scientists have found evidence of these layered oceans and rocks that are 2 billion years old, showing us this amazing time when Earth was quite literally caught between two worlds. But this wasn't just a simple color change. It was the beginning of something much bigger. As the purple faded and the orange cleared, an entirely new chapter in Earth's story was about to unfold. With oxygen becoming more abundant, the stage was set for more complex life forms to evolve. The microbes that survived this great transition would eventually give rise to all the amazing diversity of life we see today. From the tiniest plankton to the biggest blue whales, from the tallest redwoods to, well, us, the planet was getting ready for its next big adventure, transforming from an alien world of purple and orange into the blue and green paradise we call home. But that's another story, and as any scientist will tell you, Earth never really stops changing. It's just gotten a bit more subtle about it.